Back in 2018, Apple released the newly redesigned iPad Pro. Not only did it feature a stunning and beautiful redesign, but it also packed a walloping punch in terms of raw performance with Apple's custom silicon in the A12X chip. A processor found in an incredibly thin and light tablet that could go toe to toe with Intel CPUs found in bigger laptops. Most notably, the iPad Pro could outperform the 2018 13 inch MacBook Pro. Even though Apple's tablet became incredibly capable in terms of raw performance, it chipped with software that couldn't seem to keep up with the hardware. Fast forward to 2019 and Apple has debuted a new vision for the iPad complete with its own operating system, iPad OS. So the question begs, can an iPad Pro running iPad OS finally replace your laptop? For this video, I want to focus on just that question by going over key features and improvements that could make iPad OS a laptop replacement. And that all starts with the new home screen experience. iPad OS ships with a slightly redesigned home screen. Keen observers will notice that the icons on the iPad are now a lot smaller, more similar to the size that they would be on an iPhone, which allows for more of these applications on any given page of the home screen. Not only are the icons in a tighter grid, but the next thing you'll probably notice is as you swipe right on the iPad, you will reveal the widget center. Now the widget center can have a place on the main home screen of the iPad. You can even go into settings and pin certain widgets so that they're always available on the home screen. This gives you a lot of useful information that's always readily available at a glance, like your next appointment or the battery life on the various devices connected to your iPad. Now, when we heard the rumors of iOS 13 on the iPad, it wasn't even called iPad OS back then, we heard rumors of a major revision to the home screen. And while I do like the changes to the home screen, I was expecting Apple to improve it a little bit more than this. One feature I can think of off the top of my head is to always have the slide overview accessible on the home screen. That way you can take any sort of application always have it open and pinned to the home screen. Multitasking also gets some much needed improvements inside of iPad OS. So now you can have one application with two windows in split view open at one time. These multitasking windows are now available in the app's workspace. So if you go over on your dock and tap the application that you have currently running, you will get an app expose of all the different instances of your application running at one time. Because of the touchscreen interaction and the limited space on your iPad, this is kind of how you multitask between different sets of windows. So say if you have Safari open with your notes app, then you can switch over maybe to another view where you had Safari open with your Twitter client. The slide overview also gets some added features and improvements as well. The best way to think of this new slide over screen is that you have a virtual iPhone window running on your iPad. So now you can drag multiple applications into that slide overview. If you swipe on the bottom, much like you would on an iPhone, you can quickly switch between the applications in that slide overview. You'll notice that that slide overview even has its own home bar. And if you swipe up on that home bar and hold, you can also view all of the applications that are open in that view. And then you can swipe up to dismiss them much again, like you would on an iPhone 10. So far, I'm really liking this new way of multitasking on iPad OS. However, I still think there can be some more improvements along the line. Most notably, I would like to see something like a floating window accessible for applications, much like the picture in picture view that you get on the video player on your iPads currently. That way you could take an application, maybe drag it over to the bottom left or the bottom right, and then kind of position that application anywhere you want. One of the biggest problems with using an iPad as a laptop has always been text selection. So now you can more easily pick up the text selection cursor. All you have to do is tap it, and then you can drag it precisely where you want. Also, if you wanna select a certain portion of text, you no longer have to long press on the home screen and wait for that magnifying glass. Now you can just drag your finger immediately across the words you want to select and then the iPad will select them. Apple is also adding some intelligent text selection. So now you can select a word with just a double tap. You can also select names by double tapping. Or if you have an address written out, you can also double tap that and the intelligent text selection will automatically select it. Apple is also adding a number of gestures to make it easier to either copy, paste, undo, or redo. So now to copy a selection, all you have to do is a three finger pinch and then if you want to paste that somewhere, you would do a three finger spread. To undo, you would take three fingers and swipe to the left. And then to redo, you would take those same three fingers and swipe to the right. 
Overall, I think the improvements to text selection on iPadOS are working really well, and I do like the undo and redo gestures. However, I am personally having trouble with the copy and paste gesture. I find that it's a little bit inaccurate at times. Now, this is a beta, and maybe that will change for the public release, but as for now, I find it a little bit hard to activate. However, if you have a physical keyboard for your iPad, you might prefer to ditch the gestures and use some keyboard commands. Now, iPadOS opens up a a lot more in terms of keyboard commands, and there's way too many for me to cover in this video. Apple says by the time that iPad OS is released, you should be able to navigate the entire iPad just by using your keyboard. Now maybe you do have that smart keyboard and your iPad is propped up at a desk, and maybe you don't want to spend all day reaching up to touch the screen to interact with it, well now you don't have to because the iPad finally adds mouse support. Now, mouse support isn't enabled by default. You actually have to go over into the accessibility settings, and it's really meant for people who are unable to touch the screen on an iPad. However, even though it is an accessibility setting, there's no reason why you can't utilize it. Now, mouse support on the iPad works very much like you would expect it to, and the mouse pointer mimics your finger. All you have to do to activate that mouse pointer is to right click on the screen, and then you could do all the interactions you normally would do with touch. So simply hold down the right click and then drag across the screen to switch between your homepage. You can even go up and drag down Control Center, and you can access all of the gestures that you normally would with your finger just with the mouse pointer. The mouse pointer on iPad is a lot bigger than a normal mouse pointer, and it's also in a circular reticule. At first, I didn't like how this looked, and I still kind of don't like the look, but I understand why it is shaped this way. Touch targets on the iPad are much bigger than they normally would be on a desktop operating system. So you don't have to be as precise with the iPad, and anything that's in that circular reticule, when you click down on it, that is what you will be interacting with. Now, mouse support isn't perfect, and I would say that really comes down to iPad not really being designed to be operate it with a mouse as its primary input method. However, it works and it works pretty well. Furthermore, iPadOS is also bringing over some more desktop experiences by giving us a desktop Safari web browser. So with previous iOS versions, the web browser would automatically default to the mobile view in most circumstances. However, now the iPad acts a lot more like the Safari web browser that you would expect on your Mac. So if you're visiting a site like YouTube, you get the full desktop experience. So for me, as someone who makes YouTube videos, I would often often visit YouTube's website on my iPad, and then if I wanted to access any of my analytics through YouTube Studio, I was unable to do that before iPadOS. Now, if I go to those websites, if I go to a Google Docs page, if I go to Squarespace or WordPress, before I would just always have to go to a desktop to access the full versions of those websites, and it was always a workaround or a barrier to get them working properly, now with iPadOS, that workaround, that barrier of accessing full websites is no longer there, and that is a big part of making an iPad your daily laptop. Safari even adds its own download manager so you can more easily keep track of all the different files you're downloading from the web. And speaking of files, the Files app for iPadOS also gets a slight revision. The Files app now allows for more detailed views of files and additional controls. You can now also create shared iCloud Drive folders for the first time, so now you can share those folders with multiple people and that really helps if you're working on different projects, so the files are always accessible to everyone in that group. iPadOS also gains the ability to now see file servers. So now if you have a server you need to access for work, or even if you have a home server with a a lot of different media stored on it, now you can access that directly in your iPad. And probably the biggest addition is now that the iPad gets access to external drive support. So say if you plug in something like a USB thumb drive or even a full external hard drive, now the iPad can access all of those files. You can also do this on an SD card and you can also now import photos directly into third-party applications rather than the usual workaround you used to have to do when you wanted to edit photos 
photos on an iPad, you would first have to import them into the Photos app, and then from the Photos app, that's when you would import them into the third-party application for editing. Now you can completely bypass that step, just plug in a SD card, and then offload the photos that you wanna edit directly into the application of your choice. And overall, it just creates way better file management on iPad, where before, there were a lot of workarounds. Like I said, if you wanted to edit photos, you had to put them in your photos app first. And that's not always the case when you want to edit a photo. You don't always want it in your personal photo library. It also means there's other workarounds that you won't have to go through anymore. So before, if you had someone who had a presentation, maybe they wanted to show it to you on your iPad and that's the computer you brought with you before, even though those files were on that thumb drive, they weren't accessible on the iPad. Now all you have to do is simply plug it in and now you can see all of those files readily available to you. And there are a lot of features that I'm not even covering in this video, like the ability to now download fonts from the App Store, but the main question that we wanted to address is can the iPad running iPad OS finally replace your laptop? And I think that answer is yes! Yes! I have often said that the iPad, even before iPadOS, could be a laptop alternative for most people out there. However, because of the limitations of previous iOS versions, for some people that still required a lot of workarounds to truly make the iPad function as a main computer. With iPadOS, those limitations or little workarounds become much less frequent. However, I would like to note that even though I think the iPad is capable of replacing a laptop, that doesn't mean it's going to replace a laptop for everyone out there. Some people still have workflows or processes or applications that are only accessible on Windows or Mac OS. And for people who rely on those programs or workflows, obviously the iPad isn't going to be able to replace your main laptop, but for the vast majority of people out there, the iPad is fully capable of replacing a laptop. But anyway, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that the iPad running iPad OS can replace a laptop? If you liked the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.